Hello everybody and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about one of my most favorite tools and that is Microsoft Defender for Identity. But first, my name is Mark Connolly and I'm a Cloud Cybersecurity Architect for Imperion and we help customers all over the Midwest with their Microsoft 365 and cybersecurity needs. So Defender for Identity is an additional sensor to Defender for Endpoint that you can put on your Active Directory systems and Active Directory Federation services on premise that gives you a very, very robust set of alerts and logging things that you can you know, tie into your incidents and security events. So to get there and get started, um, you're definitely going to need Azure Active Directory P2. Defender for Identity is a P2 feature, but if you have an on-premise Active Directory environment, it's pretty much a no-brainer to get the P2 SKU, even if you only use it for this. Uh, so to get here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our security portal. We're going to navigate down here to our settings. And then our settings, we're going to select identities. So this is the general control panel that we're going to use for Defender for Identity. And the first thing that we need to do is to actually install one of the sensor agents on our domain controller. So if we go back to our diagram and kind of see what we're doing here, uh, we have a domain controller uh, running Bitdefender. It's not going to be running Defender for Endpoint in active mode. It's going to be running in passive mode. And we're going to be putting the Defender for Identity sensor on here. When somebody attacks this environment um, and they breach the VPN and they're able to actually log into either the desktop or the laptop machine, the, those are domain joined to that local domain. So one of the first things they're going to do is they're going to try and pivot and take over the domain controller. And we should be able to see a significant amount of Defender for Identity alerts in that attack log. I'll put these links in the description. But some of these alerts are just golden, right? Like if you've been doing identity security, for a while and you've used tools like Splunk, you know that correlating these types of events can be pretty painful. And one of the cool things, one of the most beneficial things in my opinion that Defender for Identity does is it just kind of packages all of this stuff, all this threat intelligence, all these forensics out of the box. And because they're generating alerts, those are getting integrated to the Defender portal. They're gonna get tied into your security incidents very, very cleanly so you can kind of see how somebody pivots through the environment. They hop from one machine, they do this on this machine to try and elevate the privileges, so on and so forth. So uh, I'll put this link in the, in the description here, but you know, over the hash attacks, count enumeration, brute force on your LDAP systems, uh, DC sync, golden ticket usage, skeleton key attacks, honey tokens. Uh, if, you, if you've used any deception technology, Defender for Identity has a honey token system that it can use. Uh, to proactively alert you if somebody's in your environment. SAMR here, so user and group member reconnaissance. If people are trying to snoop around and see who's in your groups, uh, you get an alert for that. Uh, brute force on Kerberos and NTLM, golden ticket usage, uh, DC shadow attacks. There's a whole bunch of them in here that you're going to want to be aware of if any of this stuff is happening in your environment. And the only thing that you really need to do is meet the prerequisites and install the agent on your domain controller. It integrates into Defender natively, so it'll just be a part of your uh, incidents and alert logs. Uh, so another cool thing that it does is it gives you this identity security posture. So this supports up to 30 domains, so it can be really powerful if you have a lot of legacy domains because you can see all the bad stuff that's going on in those like neglected older systems that nobody ever really jumps into. Uh, clear text credential exposure if they're using LDAP instead of LDAP-S. Um, legacy protocol communications, weak cipher usage. If they're using something like RC4, that's pretty easy to crack. It's going to be able to detect that and give you a list of things that you know, are doing bad things, essentially. Um, you know, print spooler, print nightmare is still a thing, so you definitely don't want that on your domain controllers. Uh, dormant entities and sensitive groups, so if like somebody's been inactive for six months, they and they're in a privileged group, you probably should remove them. Um, SID history attributes and account attributes of somebody set to password never expire or other things. 
It just gives you a quick list of unsecure account attributes that are present in your environment. And because it supports up to 30 domains, you can put it on your primary domain and you can put it on all your legacy domains as well. Just kind of get visibility across your environment. So let's talk about the prerequisites, right? I'm in a lab, so I'm going to fudge the power and space and core prerequisites and I'll just get a bunch of health alerts and I'm okay with that. Um, but there are considerations to take. If you're putting this into a production environment, uh, definitely go over this. I'll put this link in the description as well. Uh, yeah, Nick teaming is a big thing. Uh, resource requirement is a big thing. There's a sizing tool in here. And whatever the sizing tool says or recommends, add like 20% to it because you're going to need it, especially in like a really dense environment. Um, <laughs> Uh, but the big one of the big ones is going to be our event logs, right? So I can fudge the power requirements and I can fudge the core requirements and the memory requirements, but I cannot fudge the port requirements that you're going to need. So this is going to need to phone home to Azure. So there's a list of uh, you know network ports and URLs on here. What it's going to need? Open it up in your firewall, uh, and then you're also going to have to configure your Windows event collector. So your audit policies, here we go. These are the events that I'm looking for. So I'm not gonna be putting this on Active Directory Federation services. I'm only gonna be putting it on a domain controller. Uh, so make sure that you go through and set your uh, GPOs accordingly so that you actually are logging for all of these things. And there's step-by-step -step instructions in this. So just follow the link if you are confused by any of this. Uh, but definitely make sure that all of these events are getting logged properly. So I haven't done that yet in my environment, so I'm actually gonna jump over and pause this video and get that updated right now. All right, so we got those settings configured. Just figured the SAMR policy, so let's go ahead and run a GP update. And then we are going Install the sensor. All right, so back here in our um, security portal, settings, identities, uh, we're gonna land on the sensors page. So we're gonna go ahead and click add sensor. And we're gonna download the installer. Might take a while. I'll be back. All right, here we go. All right, installation completed successfully. Awesome, 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 awesome. All right, now that we've got our sensor configured, let's go ahead and set up our directory service account. So in the document that you went through, the prerequisites, this is gonna be the account that you gave permission to audit all the stuff to. Let's go ahead, add the credentials. Single label domain. Let's go to the service cam pad, paste it over there. 
Let's save. So now it's got the credentials that it needs. If you are in a hybrid environment where you're seeking or syncing users from Active Directory up to Azure Active Directory, this action account is really cool uh, because the risk-based stuff and other things that you can do in Azure AD with P2 license, there's a button that says like confirm user compromised. If you have an action account, this action account will then reach on-prem and do activities to that account as well on-premise. So I don't have that set up for this one, but just put it out there. Um, so advanced settings. So this is a good one. Defender for Identity is going to have a learning period uh, off top. Um, and in this environment, I don't really need a learning period because I just created the domain like, I don't know, an hour or two ago. So, all right, so let's go to, we don't need that, report management. Uh, report management is going to be where you can set up any like recurring reports that you want, especially if you have like passwords and clear text. Uh, let's say that you've gotten through your identity security posture gotten through this list and you're in pretty good shape, right? You still want to keep an eye on these things. So like just do a report, send it to yourself weekly, let you know if anything new pops up and you can just go address it from there. Uh, entity tagging is really important. So this is going to sync with our on-premise directory at some point. I don't know if I can pull users just yet. Yeah, yes, I can. All right, so let's get me and let's get Derek. And we will mark ourselves as sensitive. Right, so this puts a tag on our user account. So in the various Defender for Identity logs, these priority users are going to be given higher level risk scores in the calculations. Uh, likewise, we talked a little bit about Honey Token accounts. So this is this is going to be our accounts that we're going to use. Um, we're going to put them on places. We're going to log in. We're going to leave them cached in the local credentials because we want the attackers to pick up on these identities. These identities are flagged as honey tokens. So anytime any activity is going to be performed on these, then we're going to get an alert on that because it's ac accessing a honey token account. Uh, so from our use cases, for our use cases, we're going to use Mike and Zach is our honey token accounts. Um, if you have exchange servers, you can put your exchange servers in here. I don't have any exchange servers in this particular environment. And actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, sensitive doesn't just apply to users. So I, I did tag users in here because that's what I want to tag right now. I don't have any devices. I don't really have any groups yet either. Um, but if you do, if you do have sensitive devices, for instance, I'm a global administrator, the workstation that I log in on is going to be sensitive because I'm the one doing like, I'm the one doing day to day tasks on it. So it's going to have a higher level risk factor. So we would definitely want to flag that device in our Defender for Identity. Likewise, groups, you know, if you have uh, particular types of security groups, maybe there's an application and you've done RBAC, you've bound that to groups and it gives a certain level of permission. Maybe it gives you a bunch of permission in VMware or your SIM or somewhere else. Um, and you wanna flag that as a priority sensitive group. So you can put that in here. Same way with the identities, you just go through the groups and select them. Uh, and then the honey tokens can be users in addition to devices, right? So I don't have any devices or I throw a device in there, just try it out. Um, and then notifications. So you can set up your notifications here. Uh, I turned off the health alerts because I didn't give that thing enough resources, so it's going to be yelling at me all night. And then any notifications for any type of alerts that we get, I want to go to me as well. So that is Defender for Identity. We are going to go ahead and let this bake, and then I'll come back to it after a little bit. Uh, I'm going to be doing various activity in the lab, uh, so we can you know, go back over here. We've got a file server, we've got a desktop, those are domain joins, so I'm going to be putting those Honey Token accounts on those, setting up the antivirus profiles and deploying Defender for Endpoint. And then when we get done with that, uh, hopefully the Defender for Identity is a, has some logs, has a little, had a little bit of time to cook, uh, it'll have some statistics for us, and we can just make sure everything's working as designed. So we're going to continue building out this lab and setting everything up and uh, recording videos as we go. So. 
I look forward to seeing you on the next video.